Hey guys, today we are doing the cosine rule. Okay, cosine rule, which I've written first here, is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Can't believe I forgot that. Take 2ab times the cos of c. All right, this is for any triangle, no matter what it looks like. Angles A, opposite side, little a, b, opposite side, little b, c, opposite side, little c. Okay, just like we've seen for the sine rule and the area formula, half a, b, sine of c. Okay, you might recognize that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared is very much like Pythagoras, because this is essentially Pythagoras' theorem, just slightly extended. Okay, you have a look over here in the corner, because it's a little side note here. C, if C was 90 degrees, what is cos of 90? Well, that's zero, going back to our unit circle and our exact values. Okay, so when you have a 90 degree angle, then you've got C opposite that 90 degree angle being the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse squared is equal to the other two sides, or the sum of the other two sides squared. So A squared plus B squared. So it is Pythagoras' theorem, but it's got this little extra bit. Take 2AB, A and B are the same letters from this side of my equal sign, but cos C here, that capital C is the angle that is opposite the side that I am trying to find. Okay, now it doesn't matter how you write this so much that it doesn't matter where A and B are in the triangle, just that A and B or C is the included angle between A and B. Okay, you have A here. B here, C is that angle that is in between them. Right, just like we had for our area formula. And you're trying to find the side that is opposite that. Anyways, moving forth, you can also rewrite or rearrange the cosine rule to get the angle on one side, you would need to do the inverse of cos to finish it up, which I'll show in an example. Cos c is equal to a squared plus b squared takes c squared all over 2ab. Okay, the angle that you are trying to find is opposite the side that you are subtracting. Okay, the uh, generally the mistake that people make here is that they, they don't pay attention to which side is opposite that angle, and then they end up taking the wrong one or finding the wrong angle. You know, there's a lot of carry through mistakes with that kind of thing. Now, unlike sine, when you do the inverse of cos, there is no ambiguous case for our triangle that we're doing because of the way that cos works. Cos of theta, or cos of 180 take theta is negative. Can't, can't have that negative angle that we want. Anyways, let's get into some examples here. All right. So for our first example, find the length, which I've had to add in afterwards, xz, which is this side here, opposite the angle that I've got written in here, 47 degrees, correct to two decimal places. So y squared, the one that I'm trying to find, I've labeled the vertices x, y, and z, and I've labeled the opposite sides, so the lower case of those letters. So z is opposite z, x is opposite x, y is opposite y. It's up to you how you want to label things, or if you want to label them at all. But y is opposite the 47 degree angle, so when I get up to it, it's going to be cos of 47. The two sides around it are 5.3 and 7.2, making those two A and B. So we get 5.3 squared times 7.2 squared, take two lots of those two sides, 
times by the cos of 47 degrees. I'm going to remove the edge of my page there. Okay. You could work out the whole thing, but remember that this is going to be y squared. So once we have got that answer, then we're going to need to square root it to get the actual value. Okay, 5.3 squared plus 7.2 squared makes 2 times 5.3 times 7.2 times by the cosine of 47, 27.87, which is what y squared is equal to. And then we take the square root of that answer, and we get 5.28 centimeters, just like that. Make sure you don't do the square root of 27.88 because that I have rounded. You want to use the answer from your calculator to make sure you don't have any rounding errors. Okay. Um, let's try another example. This one we're going to be finding an angle rather than a side. Okay. The angle that I'm trying to find is alpha. Did I read this correctly? Um, Sorry. Um, find alpha to the nearest degree, okay? The angle here is opposite the 8.9, so once we have our formula, cos c is equal to a squared plus b squared takes b squared over 2ab. The angle that we're trying to find, alpha, is opposite 8.9, so I'm going to do 5.6 squared add 4.8 squared take 8.9 squared 8.9 opposite alpha got to pay attention to that so I'm taking the 8.9 2 times 5.6 times 4.8 right. and Assuming we've done this correctly, we should get a value that is less than 1 for cos of alpha. Let's take a look. I'm going to set up a fraction this time. 5.6 squared plus 4.8 squared equals 0.9 squared. And then 2 times 5.6 times 4.8. Alright, it's in between negative 1 and 1, which is what our cos value does. Pay attention to that unit circle because you can see that visually there. And then we want to do the inverse of cos of that value. Double check your calculator is in degrees, otherwise you'll probably get a radiance answer. And we just need to go to the nearest degree, which is 117. Let's have a look like that. Let me see how that went a mistake there. I started to go to the decimal point. Okay. So paying attention to what we're subtracting when we're finding an angle. Yeah. Lastly, we have a Got to sketch this. Um, we have a compass bearing problem. Right. We've got tower in the direction north 52 degrees east is found to be at a range of 4.86 kilometers. The range finder shows that another tower or bearing of 106 degrees 
is at a range of 7.96 kilometers. Find the distance between the two towers. So where are our two towers according to our diagram? Well, we're on, we've got north 52 degrees, and this goes for 4.86 kilometers. So always labeling you north. This is my first tower. And then 106 degrees going from north again. This is 52 degrees in the easterly direction, so that's fine. 106, a little bit past 90. Looks something like this. Always marking north. Tower 2. And that was our 106 degree angle. And we want to find the distance between our two towers, x. So it looks something like that. That's supposed to have kilometers on it. And I need to label them 7.96 kilometers at the bottom there. So to find x using our cosine rule, we need the angle that is opposite it in a triangle. So hopefully we can see the triangle. Sometimes it might be useful to rewrite the triangle, but outside of your diagram, we need to find this angle between those two bearings. One was 52 degrees, the other one was 106. So 54 degrees is the difference. Now that we've got that, we can use the cosine rule. So x squared is equal to 4.86 squared plus 1.96 squared. Take, I'm going to run out of room here. So I'm going to go to the next line. Time, take 4.86, 2 times 4.86 times 7.96 of 54 degrees. Uh -huh. So we'll get a value for x squared and we'll take the square root to find x. So our calculator, so we've done 4.86 squared at 7.96 squared take 2 times 4.86 times 7.96 times by the cos of 54 so x squared is 41.5 and we're going to take the square root of that answer without rounding it and we get 6.44 kilometers. And I'm going to give it to two decimal places because that's what the other values in my diet or in my question were. They both had two, de two decimal places or two or three significant figures 4.86, 7.96, so 6.44 kilometers. Okay? So, pay attention oh, to the take whatever side when you're finding an angle and when you are trying to find a side you are doing the you're finding the side opposite the angle that you're using and that angle has to be in between the other two sides that angle is included between those two sides a and b anyways that's the end we'll catch you next time